Okay, so good morning sa tanan na itong uh, mga students and uh, I hope that everyone's okay and everyone's comfortable sa ilahang respective ng mga homes. And today we are going to start our, I don't know if we can call this as podcast, but uh, tanan na to if uh, okay rin niya ito ang style karon sa ito ang online nga mag uh, himo taog recorded audio sa ito ang discussion. Okay, so uh, I welcome you all sa ito ang program karon sa ito ang Edward Openas classroom. Okay, so again, this is cell and molecular biology nga class, but anyone who are able to access this file are is welcome to be with us today. Okay, so today we are going to discuss topic number one. Overview of cell and molecular biology. So I presume that all of you already have your handouts with you. Nga kato akong gisend nga file uh, weeks ago. Okay, so this is Edward Lawrence Opena, and this is your course instruct instructor. Again, this is lecture number one or topic number one: overview of cell and molecular biology. Okay, so we are now going to start with our discussion and uh, going to the introduction. So, we have to remember that in the natural world, we have living organisms, okay? So, human beings are living organisms, and you have plants, you have animals, you have fungi, you have bacteria, even those microscopic, mic, uh, microscopic organism. Now, take note that everyone that has life is made up of cells. So, tanan yun nga na ikinabuhi. Uh, na na siya cell. So, um, if you can remember sa inyong general biology is that na na siya gitawag na nga hierarchy of life. So, ang hierarchy of life is uh, ang first good is kaning uh, natay kaning chemical or molecular nga level. Next is uh, katong organal nga level. Next is cellular level. Hangtun nga ang cells, mahimong tissues, tissues mahimong organs, organs may himong system and system may himong organism hangtod nga mag magkasaka ang iyang hierarchy. Now, when we talk about uh, kaning cells, cells are actually uh, one of the fundamental ng, uh, unit of life. In fact, it is the fundamental unit of life and we to, and when we talk about the study of cells, we also refer to it as cytology or the science of cells. Okay. So, it is considered as one of the most significant front, frontiers in the life sciences due to its indispensable contribution to our society. So, we refer here sa kaning gitawag nato ng mga biotechnology ang uh, naay application sa both in agriculture and medicine. So, mga indispensable ni sila. So, we see lots and lots of advances uh, in cell biology almost every day. So, there are a lot of exciting discoveries in various ng mga laboratories all over the world. So, cytology is also a scientific field where major branches of science collaborate. Particularly, we have biology, chemistry, physics, and even mathematics. So, when we talk about kinigitawag uh, ng cell biology, kargado yun na siya, most likely is kaning uh, chemistry. So, na ay ginagmay ng physics, and of course, we have mathematics. Okay, so the objective of this topic is to describe, you, you are expected to describe what is a cell in terms of structure and function, then identify scientists behind the development of the cell, science of cells, and identify and describe the different biomolecules that make up cells, and you must be able to differentiate cell types based on composition. Okay, so let's now go to uh, topic 1.1, that is the nature of cells. Okay, so a cell by definition is the structural and functional unit of any organism. So, tanan kita tanan ng mga living organisms are actually cell-based. Okay, so um, cytology is greatly intertwined with other fields in the biological sciences, particularly biochemistry, genetics, microbiology, biotechnology, and bioinformatics. So, well, actually, ang kaning gitawag na to, cell science or cytology, daghan siya o various fields kung diin ka pwede uh, mo, mo adto, for instance, kaning, kaning biochemistry and genetics. Okay, and of course, we have biotechnology. Okay, so ang bioinformatics... Um, 
ladies and gentlemen, is this is one of the emerging uh, field in the sciences where this is the kind of itang gitawag na tog intersection between biology, statistics, computer science. Kani sila nga mga thing. It's actually one of the interesting in a field. So, cells can be classified based on the presence of membrane-bound nucleus. For instance, um, ang kanyang itawag natong prokaryotic cells. So, kabalo naman taan ni, eh, na prokaryotic cells do not have nucleus. So, man gitawag sila o prokaryotic because um, they they thought that ang kanyang gitawag natong mga primitive ng mga form of cells do not possess any nucleus. Man gitawag natong pro from the word before and karyo which is nucleus. Okay? So, before the formation of nucleus, muna nga nana siya cells. And they are most are microscopic and prokaryotes are always single celled or ng mga organisms. On the other hand, we also have eukaryotic cells, which is uh, eukaryotic cells. They have this nucleus, membrane bound nucleus. Some can be microscopic and some are unicellular. Okay, so most of the the things that we can see in our naked eyes uh, at our natural world are eukaryotic plants animals okay so kanisla so however there are also eukaryotic cells that are unicellular so organisms can also be classified based on the cellular composition for instance th there are those that are unicellular so they are entire organism one cell is an entire organism that's unicellular and we also have multicellular whose composition is more than a cell so if an organism is made up of more than one cell okay so that can now be classified as multicellular okay so take note that cells are microscopic by nature though there are exceptions uh, we can see cells with our naked eye okay so take a look at this comparison so prokaryotes are between 1 micrometer to 10 micrometer so the, those are the that's the sizes the size range of prokaryotes on the other hand eukaryotes are between 10 micrometer to 100 micrometer so basically prokaryotes are 10 times smaller than eukaryotes okay so there are larger cells that can be seen by the naked eye such as the human egg cell so the human egg cell is actually considered one of the biggest cell in nature okay so they can be viewed under different microscopes you have the light microscope we have the phase contrast microscope and the more advanced microscopes which we call the electron microscope okay so Let's go, now, let's go now to the discovery of cells. So cells were discovered by Robert Hooke in 1665 when he viewed a thin slice of cork using his primitive microscope as published in his book Micrographia. Okay, so motto out of uh, curiosity, si Robert uh, Hooke is Iahangi slice. He, uh, he already know that microscopes can magnify magnify things okay so uh, during the time of robert hook is na invent na ang microscope by the jensen jensen brothers so moto out of curiosity he used uh kaning cork nga plant and then uh, make a thin slice and examine it under the microscope so nakita niya sa iyang microscope nga na ay mga small boxes so, niingon siya nga mura man ni siya og silda sa mga madre sa monastery. So, what he did is that he termed those tiny boxes as cells or cellula. Okay? So, or cellulae. As it reminds him of the rooms in monasteries. So, note that Hook only viewed the cell walls and not living cells. Yet, he was still credited as the first to describe a cell. Because ang nakita ni Robert Hook sa iyahang pag-examine sa katong thin slice of cork is kato na lang tong uh, mga cell wall remnant so dili yun siya living organism or living cells ang iyahang nakita sa iyahang specimen in 1676 Anton van Leeuwen Hook made his own cellular discovery and unlike Hook his discovery is more on living organisms that are unicellular so ang the first person to view a living microorganism or living cell is actually Anton van Leeuwenhoek. However, both of them, 
both discoveries uh, were limited by technology. That description is more on the cellular morphology. So, both of them were also credi credited to have seen or have laid the foundation of uh, cell biology. Okay? So, we go now to the cell theory. So, the cell theory is a universal concept about the nature of cells. Okay? So, it was pioneered by the independent studies of Rudolf Virchow, Matthias Klidin, and Theodore Squan. Their studies can be summarized into three different concepts. First is that cells are the basic unit of life. The second one is all organisms are made up of cells. And the third one is all cells come from pre-existing cells. So when we talk about the first tenet or first concept, cells are the basic unit of life. So all living organisms are... Uh, I mean, the cell more than can be taong basic unit. Can be taong without cells, there will be no organism. In <laughs> anang concept, and then the second one is all organisms are made up of cells. So tanan nga mga organisms, so walagi exemption. Uh, Naagi cell nga nag 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 lay ang I mean laid ang iyang foundation. And then, all cells come from pre-existing cells. So this is actually the third nga concept sa, I mean, third nga tenet sa cell, cell concept is that all cells come from pre-existing cells. This is actually one of the major nga challenge sa view sa evolution. Okay? Because, mauna, mangita tag uh, what is the first cell Okay, so kung maingunan nga prokaryotes, so where did these prokaryotes come from? Okay, so that's actually a serious nga objection against the theory of evolution. Okay, so however, due to the advances in cytology, additional concepts were added. First here, so there are already six, where in fact there are those who said nga 97 or 98. So the first or the fourth nga concept or tenet is cells contain genetic material that can be passed to the next generation of cells. So, kana siya. So, mauna nga. During the time of uh, Virchow, Sclyden, and Squan, medyo wa pakay sila ma... ma kana bitong wala pa kayo ma... ma... saan eh? Uh, ma-integrate ang concepts of genetics. So, uh, importante kasi siya sa cell. So, that is why na-add ni siya na cells contain genetic material that can be passed on to the next generation of cells. Next is cells are made up of the same molecules. That is why um, even though that you are a bacteriologist or you are a protozoologist bisag uh, unsa or kanang nakai respective nga distinct na cell nga imuhang ginastadihan but uh, in totality or in kung tanaw na to uniform ang composition sa cells. Okay? So uh, ang ilang carbon ang hydrogen ang, ang, ang ilang plasma membrane similar ang ilang composition ang genetic material is the same or similar ang composition what else other biomolecules similar ang ihang composition and the last nga concept here is energy flows through the cells so we we understand sa kaning gitawag nato sa uh, principles sa ecology nga naagay kaning energy all living organisms actually require energy and that energy flows from or through the cells so in eukaryotic cells the energy making uh, or any energy synthesizer is the mitochondrion and in prokaryotes it is believed to be in the plasma membrane okay so we go now to biomolecules so uh, um, when you talk about biomolecules biomolecules refer to groups of molecules that made up the structural components of cells so this refers to uh, molecules that are kind of itong itong natog himo siyang backbone nga sa kaning itong natog cells okay so it also pertains to cellular products okay so na pagi cellular cellular products so biomolecules are also termed as macromolecules and basically there are four types of macromolecules first is you have the carbohydrates then the proteins lipids and nucleic acids okay so Monisia. So most of these can gitawag na tong mga biomolecules are synthesized within the cells. So when you say synthesized within the cells, the cells itself made the molecules na ilahang ginagamit and of course ilahang gina gina export. Because take note ha, nga cells are like uh, small factories. Uh, 
kung nana sa tong lawas is mga small factors within within our body so uh, we have we have to kaning sani ang na isda <laughs> na yamaligyang isda so we have to remember nga ang kaning gitawag na tong cells every cell sa tong body is a factory Okay, so kung may tag factory is na agin siya product at the end sa iyang pag-process. Okay, so um, each biomolecule has different types based on the composition of their monomers. So when you say monomers, mo ni gitawag na to mga building blocks. So we can think of these uh, mga macromolecules or biomolecules as kaning mura siya og mga large nga mga buildings sa to ang city. So in every building you can think nga kaning mga monomers are kaning mga hollow blocks kaning mga steel kaning itawag na to mga uh, yung mga steel unsa itawag ani anang kabilya okay so kana siya those are actually the building blocks or the monomers so the formation or the structure of these monomers depend on the type or, or these biomolecules depend on the type of the monomers and of course the arrangement of these uh, monomers Okay, so biomolecules may also combine with other types of biomolecules to form complexes. So when you say compl complexes, this refers to the kanibitang uh, um, ka different nga molecules and then nag, na, 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 nag form sila isa ka structure. So we, we refer that those one as complexes. So it can be that proteins have will form complexes with sugars and vice versa or lipids to sugars or proteins kana those are those are actually complexes or protein to protein or carbohydrates to carbohydrates or lipid to lipid so they can also form those complexes so elements that made up these biomolecules are mainly carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen phosphorus and sulfur so there are also those that are known as kaning mga trace elements so present for example zinc um, na ay iron na po yung mga magnesium even in some ng mga molecules ng mga complexes na sa lay gold uh, gagmay rap yung kainat siya ng quantity okay so note that these biomolecule, biomolecules follow highly specific sequences of their monomers so this is what I tried to tell a while ago ng ang kanang sequence ang pagkasunod-sunod sa mga monomers mauna siya nagdepende ang structure sa mga biomolecule so uh, if ever nga ang isa ka biomolecule nga na form is na isa ka monomer or duha ka monomer nga nag-interchange then lahi na po na siya nga nga type or nga product sa cell okay so what else all biomolecules are carbon based hence they are organic molecules so kana siya so when we talk about biochemistry Okay, biochemistry and biomolecules is that uh, this is under kaning organic chemistry. Dong organic chemistry is a deeper nga form of chemistry. Biochemistry is all about the biologically significant nga mga molecules sa nga makita nato sa itong environment. Okay, so let's now go to carbohydrates. So carbohydrates, uh, actually it it is a coined word or coined word na siya nga itawag nag hydrates of carbon so most carbohydrates contain only carbon hydrogen and oxygen so most carbohydrates uh, carbon hydrogen and oxygen okay so depending na sa quantity or amount of these three different nga mga molecules or kaning gitawag na tong, um, elements is din ha matter na and at the same time ang yahang yahang sequence is dinha na mo, mo matter ang different types of carbohydrates so they are the primary source of energy in cells so carbohydrates are the primary source of energy in cells in animals carbohydrates that are not converted into energy will be paired with lipids to form glycogen mm, so take note ha nganong kanang mga tambok giingon na nila nga kanang uh, sana daghan ka ayo og energy reserve well actually that is correct because ang kanang mga kung mukaong tagdaghan and then dili na to i-use ang carbohydrates for energy production ang mahitabo man god is ang ato ang body is iyahan ng uh, dakpo ng excess nga carbohydrate and then iyahang itago sa lipid okay so Later on, it will become glycogen. And in plants, form carbohydrates from photosynthesis are stored as starch. 
So, in animal sa, wala tay starch. Okay? Ang starch is for plants. On the other hand, ang plants po, wala sila glycogen. It is only animals. Okay? So, take note po nga, bisag unsa kaniwang sa katao, na agyud gihapon na siya reserve. Okay? So, ang inani ni saya ang, ang pag-use sa energy sa itong lawas. So, kung mukha unta, na ay portion sa atong gikaon especially kung carbo loading atong gikaon or na carbohydrates or kanang sugar is mo na unang utilize na siya sa cell and then ang katong excess is store as glycogen kato atong gidiscuss ganiha and later on if ever nga tingkaon na unta and then wala pa ni sulod nga carbohydrates sa ato ang uh, digestive tract ang may utilize sa ato ang lawas is ang katong Uh, stored nga fats katong glycogen. However, take note nga it takes longer nga mga process to break lipids and um, carbohydrates. Okay? Ang pag-break sa duha, take note ha, nga ni form of complex ang carbohydrates nga ni form siya glycogen. So, mo take pa na siya longer nga mga process. That is why uh, some people have found nga it is it is hard to kanbitang lose weight then to gain weight kay ngano man kanang mas lisod man uh, ang process mas taas, taas man ang process sa pag break sa glycogen nga mga bonds and then it breaks siya into carbohydrates and glucose so once that this complex will be broken down into carbohydrates and lipids ang katudan din carbohydrates mao na na din to i utilize sa cell okay so most common examples uh, are glucose fructose and lactose mo ni ang mga monosaccharides by the way ang monosaccharides are the building blocks or the monomers of carbohydrates so they are also known as simple sugars due to their non complex structures and composition so mao bitaw na nga since uh, uh, energy energy na siya nga molecule they are known as the the go foods diba sa katong ato ang sa nutrition month na to go grow and glow so ang kaning mga go foods maghatag masal tog energy so uh, mo na nga categorize sila as go foods okay so carbohydrates can also form complexes with other biomolecules for significant functions in cells such as molecular receptors in the plasma membrane it is also a component of DNA so take note sa DNA is tilo maguna ka major ang components ang DNA first is you have the nitrogenous bases, another is the phosphate group and the pentose or kaning the sugar the ribose nga group mabito nang giingon siya og deoxyribose deoxyribonucleic acid so it refers to the carbohydrates nga naa sa DNA okay so in photosynthetic cells carbohydrates particularly glucose are formed via the combination of various inorganic molecules such as water and carbon dioxide. So, kana siya. So, maghimo sila og uh, combination sa kaning sa photosynthesis. Okay. So, can also be further classified based on the number of carbon present. So, kung na siya ay, kung three carbon carbohydrates na siya, we refer to it as tri trios. Kung tetros, four kabok ang yahang carbon to carbon chain and then pentose is lima and hexose is kaning unum okay so long chains of monomers can lead to the formation of complex sugars via glycosidic bond so what uh, join monomers together is known as the glycosidic bond okay so pwede na siya nga, nga kanang glucose to fructose or glucose to glucose so depende na kung unsa ang mga monomers ang involved mao na nagdepende kung unsa siya nga type sa sugar okay so now we now go to proteins so proteins uh, make up the bulk of a cell's dry weight that's approximately 70% so ang pinaka uh, daghan gyud nga biomolecule in a cell Even, uh, from prokaryotic or eukaryotic is actually protein. Okay, so it is formed through the linking of its monomers, the amino acids. So if carbohydrates have, kaning gitawag nato o monosaccharides, 
ang, ang kanin gitawag na tong proteins, they have the amino acids. So, there are approximately 20 naturally occurring amino acids, though there are reports of synthetic amino acids. So, I have read some news nga na ni synthesize og amino acid mao ta nga ingon sila nga 22 na ini ingon nga 23 so but the naturally occurring amino acid ang number niya is only 20 okay so in human cells only 10 amino acids are synthesized so when you talk about uh, synthesize meaning to say out of this 20 naturally occurring amino acid 10 can only be manufactured by the cells so mangutana din ta uh, asa man ni kay dapat man ni kumplitoho na tong uh, 20 ay, 20 ka buok okay kay mao ni himuonon nga protein so if the cells could not synthesize this 10 other amino acid asa man ta mangita og source ani so mao na nga mangita ta sa plants okay so mao na nga pang dapat sa tuang diet is dili lang ta puro sugar okay dili lang ta puro lipid kung di mangita po ta og plants particularly plants nga na ay rich sa amino acids okay aron mo help og protein ang uban they they source their amino acids they stand other amino acids from meat okay so each protein has its own unique sequence of amino acids okay so this is what i emphasized a while ago nga ang characteristic or ang distinction or ang identity sa usa ka types of sa biomolecule will always depend on the sequence of its monomers. Okay, so kung na ay panglitan, if na kay protein A, maon siya ang yung sequence, 100 ka buok. Ang protein B is similar yung sequence, pero na ay duha nga nag-interchange, that is already a, an entirely different protein. Okay, so a protein can have a, dozen, a few dozen to thousands of amino acids. Okay, so few dozen to thousand of amino acids so uh, nay uban nga uh, less than 100 okay nay uban by the hundreds ang uban pod is by the thousands in nature one of the biggest nga uh, kanigitawag na to og protein is known as albumin common man siya sa egg okay so albumin kanang egg white albu from the word alb alba which means white so kanang sa egg white is kana siya dako kan siya protein and another is kaning hemoglobin hemoglobin is a protein and then it's actually one of the bigger uh, big proteins in the human body okay so proteins observe different structures inside the cells you have the primary you have the secondary tertiary and quaternary and na ay article nga akong gi-attach din ha and i ask you to read it okay nga gikan siya sa nature so Ang, ang thought lang yun ani is that ang uh, primary protein structure is kanang plain lang yun kung unsa ihang sequence sa uh, amino acid okay so that's the uh, kaning one dimensional the second dimensional is ni hinahinay na siya fold and then some more fold will lead to its tertiary tertiary uh, structure and ang may use take note ha ang may utilize sa cell is not second the secondary it's not the tertiary or not the primary structure but ang protein nga naana siya sa iyahang quaternary structure mauni siya ang iyahang mauni ang may utilize sa cell so take note nga ang kaning protein is gikan magdina siya sa DNA as it pass through the membrane sa primary membrane sa endoplasmic reticulum maghinahina na siya og configure hangtod nga mahimo siya nga quaternary hangtod nga maabot sa Golgi bodies sorting and then i-export or i-import siya so gamiton sa cells or gamiton sa other nga mga cells nga katong gipang export okay so i ask you to read the article di lang na nako i-elaborate pero i ask you di, to read the article nga ako ang gi, gi include din ha okay so what else so like we go now to um, i mean there is at sa conclusion sa katong nga article nga ako ang gi include so, proteins are built as chains of amino acids, which then fold into unique three-dimensional shapes. Bonding within protein molecules helps stabilize their structure. Okay, their structure and the final folded form of uh, proteins are well adapted for their functions. So, main forms of proteins inside and outside the cells are number one, structural 
support mao gyud ang iyang primary nga nga kaning function kanang support the cytoskeleton we will be um, um, discussing further kaning mga cytoskeleton sa ato ang topic number 2 okay what else enzymes and of course hormones so, so take note ha that even though nga daghang kay siya cells for instance katong mga sa mga multicellular organism daghang kay siya cells but these cells have strict coordination so they talk they literally talk to each other so ang ilang language is they, they 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 speak the language of the hormones so they understand each other via the production of hormones okay so hormones are protein Okay, so that's protein. We now go to lipids. So when we talk about lipids, lipids are water insoluble organic compounds. So dili siya ma dissolve in water. Okay, so contra kibale mga contra ni sila sa water. Okay, so fatty acids are the building blocks, and there are two types of fatty acids. You have either the saturated fatty acids or the unsaturated fatty acids okay so just a little review sa mga monomers sa kuan sa sa carbohydrates is you have the monosaccharides sa protein is you have the amino acids and sa lipids is you have the fatty acids okay so lipids can also be either uh, can either be up amphipathic okay um Amphipathic, which contains both polar and non-polar regions, or hydrophobic, which purely has non-polar regions. Okay, hydrophobic. Later on, we we discuss this one sa katong sa topic number two. Okay, ang iyang iyang structure, especially kung mo discuss na taog sa nika ni phospholipid bilayer. So the most common forms of lipids are phospholipids, the triglycerols, steroids, and then katong ato ang saturated fatty acids, and of course you have the glycolipids or glycolipids. Okay, so <clears throat> species of lipids depend on the number of carbon-to-carbon -carbon interaction and the double bonds form, and the complexes it formed with other molecules. So just like uh, protein and carbohydrates, ang lipids would have this capacity to form complexes with other lipids or other groups of biomolecules. Okay? So, phospholipid are said to be the most abundant lipid e lipid form in cellular membrane, a phospholipid. Okay? So, basic structure of phospholipid is that there are two lipid, uh, lipid groups, esterified to glycerol 3-phosphate plus alcohol. So, these molecular components give rise to a phospholipid molecule that contains a hydrophilic head and a hydrophobic tail. So, ang phospholipid is na agin siya two major groups, the, the head and the tail. Ang head is the water-loving, the hydrophilic, and the lipid tail is the hydrophobic. Okay? So, hydrophobic, I mean to say, it's afraid of water. Okay? So, the two layers of phospholipids made up the plasma membrane or the cell membrane. So, we call this one, the kind of two layers of phospholipids in the plasma membrane as the phospholipid bilayer. So, the presence of cholesterol, which is another form of lipid, increase the fluidity of the plasma membrane. This is significant, especially during cell transport, communication, and cell division. Okay? So, na ay na cholesterol once in a while, uh, in between sa kaning phospholipid bilayer is na asya cholesterol. So, iyahang increase ang iyahang permeability or iyahang fluidity. Okay? So, unsa may significant aning cholesterol, significance aning cholesterol nga naa sa atong phospholipid bilayer. This is actually to make kaning transport of molecules, okay, inside and outside sa cell nga easier siya. Okay? So, take note nga nga tong cell also needs an uh, some cholesterol, some amount of cholesterol. So, pero di yung ito magpalabi because there are two categories of cholesterol. The, the high-density lipolipid or high HDL, high-density lipid and the uh, low-density uh, mga lipid groups. So, careful lang ta sa ito ang diet. Kay, though we need cholesterol but not that much cholesterol. Kanang mga bad nga mga cholesterol. Particularly, specifically, 
Okay, so the presence of cholesterol, cholesterol, oh, ma'am niya kong basa gani niya. Okay, communication and cell division, kana siya. Okay, so, kana siya. So, um, makita na to, the, nga, ang carbon to carbon also sa kaning lipid, uh, na uban nga mga parts sa kaning lipid sa yung chain of carbon nga nag-exhibit o uh, double bond. Okay, so, take note ha, nga, ang isa ka carbon can have a double bond or single bond or a triple bond kana siya okay so <clears throat> let's go na to the nucleic acid so the nucleic acid this is not the fourth biomolecule so this nucleic acid are molecules that are responsible for the transfer of genetic material from parent cells to their offspring okay so maoni diri na mo come in ang genetic nga side sa biomolecules Okay, or sa bio, uh, biochemistry. Okay, so naa siya, siya ang nakaform sa genetic materials that can, be, uh, that can be transferred from parent cells to offspring. Okay, so the building blocks of nucleic acids are nucleotides. And there are two types of nucleic acids. We have the deoxyribonucleic acid or the DNA and the ribonucleic acid which is the RNA. So, nucleic acids have three major components. The first is the heterocyclic or the nitrogenous base. So, take note that there are five different bases. You have the adenine, okay? You have the thymine, cytosine, guanine, and uracil. DNA is made up of adenine, cytosine, thymine, and guanine. While um, RNA is made up of um, adenine, cytosine, and instead of thymine, giilisan og uracil. And of course, the last is you have the uh, guanine. Okay? So, the second component is a sugar group, the pentose. And the third component sa uh, nucleic acid is the phosphate group. Okay? So, this basis of different number of hydrogen. Have hydrogen bonds that can form with other bases. For example, for adenine and thymine two hydrogen bonds so while cytosine and guanine is three hydrogen bonds this is the very reason the number of <coughs> hydrogen bonds that can potentially form is the reason why adenine and thymine is paired and cytosine and guanine is paired okay because kung tanaw na nato is that ang adenine kung i-pair na ni mo either cytosine or guanine na isa ka hydrogen hydrogen nga walay paris okay so, I mean, hinana siya. So, ang perfect nga, nga match is adenine to thymine. Kaya naman siya itagduha-duha ka hydrogen band. And cytosine to guanine, which has um, three hydrogen bands. So, the number of bands then will allow the pairing of A to T and C to G. Okay? So, in DNA... These bases are specifically arranged to form specific genes. Maning gitawag na itong base pairs. Okay? So, kaning eight A to T and C to G, ang ilahang pairing, we call it one as base pairs. So, sa DNA, ang ilahang sequencing will determine kung unsan na siya nga klase sa gene. So, genes in turn will be transcribed and translated to form one or more proteins. Okay? So, kana siya. So, ang gene is matranslate na siya later on into proteins. Okay? So, one gene may may uh, be able to produce at least one protein or more. Okay? So, dili na ni siya obsolete na ang hypothesis sa kaning one gene, one protein. Okay? Sa una mang good is that ang ilang hanggi hypothesize nga ang isa ka gene is isa ragyo ka protein. But the number of proteins are more then the number of genes so giyon sa pag resolve nganong mas daghan man ang kung, kung tinuod ha kung tinuod ang one gene one protein hypothesis why is it that there are more proteins than there are genes so that is why the more acceptable hypothesis is that ang isa ka gene can produce one or more um, proteins okay so naapo din ha sa figure 1.5 I place there the structural differences between the two nucleic acid. So take note that in most cases, DNA is double-stranded. And in most cases, RNA is single-stranded. Though in nature, there are those nga ni exist nga, nga single-stranded DNA. And there are also those nga ni exist nga double-stranded 
RNA pero mga special cases na ni sila and one and, and another nga major difference between RNA and DNA is that DNA is way way longer than an RNA okay so we will be discussing DNA and RNA I think it's in topic number 4 which is already part sa inyong hang finals okay so cytology in the modern world so right after Gregor Mendel established the chromosomal basis of inheritance in the 1800s, scientists tried to decipher further the structure of the chromosome. Okay? Sa so una mang good before Gregor Mendel is that ang ilahang una-una is that protein man si, uh, protein ang ang protein man daw siguro ang nagdala sa inheritance, okay? So but the um Discovery of Gregor Mendel, ni Ingus Gregor Mendel, no, no, it is in the chromosome. Okay, dili siya protein, but ang chromosome ang nagdala sa kaning gitawag na to gene na pwede ma-transfer from parent to offspring. Okay, and then, what else? With the advances in technology, scientists then eliminate the theory that proteins are the hereditary molecules and replaced it with the nucleic acids. Okay, so take note that, that Gregor Mendel still do not have any idea of nucleic acid. Kaya mo lagi na, na ay technological limitations. Okay, pero the advances sa kaning gitawag na to og, uh, uh, genetics is that ni, ni verify, ni valid, uh, validate ang mga scientists sa findings ni Gregor Mendel. Because the thing mong good sa findings ni Gregor Mendel is that na-appreciate man siya mga at least 30 years after Mendel died. Okay, so na rediscover and siya. That is why, because of what Gregor Mendel contributed, Gregor Mendel was credited as the father of uh, genetics. Okay, so though chromosomal lang siya kay moto nga, dilip ang ingon ka advance ang atong technology before. So even though the DNA has been identified as the hereditary molecule as the start of the 20th century, the molecule's correct structure remained to be a puzzle for both chemist and physicist. So, mo nga na-replace na ang protein as the carrier of of heredity na na-replace na siya sa nucleic acid. Pero, ang correct structure sa DNA which can be found in the chromosome is puzzling pa siya. Okay? mo na ang puzzle. But, in the 1950s, the works of Francis Crick, James Watson, Maurice Wilkins, and Rosalind Franklin solved the decades-long molecular puzzle of the DNA. So, silang upat. And, the discovery of the correct structure of DNA is considered as one of, scientists, of sciences, science's greatest achievements since it paved the way for many frontiers in science, especially in cell biology. That is why in 1953, uh, Crick, Watson, and Wilkins received the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine. Okay, so other application is that medical and agricultural sciences are the ma major beneficiaries of this discovery. Nga nung medicine man. Okay, because kung tanaw na to ang kanabit ng itawag na to stem cell therapy, siya. what else? Kanang biotechnology. Okay, sa so, kanang sa uh, biomedicine because there are already because of our our kind of itong, uh, na, na understand na nato ang concept sa nucleic acid sa DNA we were able to um kaning gitawag to merge ang different genes kaning recomb uh, recombinant DNA technology so there are a lot of products nga ato ang ginakonsume karon nga gikan na sa bacteria Okay, gika na sa bacteria, gina farm na nato. Okay? So, that's 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 medical. What about agricultural? Kanang mga mga pest resistant nga mga strains of different crops. Okay? So, kana siya do na ay uban nga kanang gitawag ato genetically, yeah, genetically modified organisms na magyun ng na kanibitang gi alter kanang liber uh, uh, kanibitang uh, gi alter og tuyo gyud ang kanang genetic composition sa sukay organism then we can call that one as genetically modified organism so there are those nga nag-oppose ani mga anti GMO nga mga products because according to their arguments is that wala pa ta kibalo kung unsa gyud long term effect sa mga GMO products sa especially sa tuang body and of course sa tuang environment okay 
So, cytology is one of the most significant field in the sciences as it produces products that are needed by the society. Okay, food, medicine, and sustainable energy. So, kaning sa sustainable energy, take note nga ang one of the things nga ilahang ginatanaw yung maayo to replace fossil fuels are actually algae. Okay, so kana siya isa na sa mga major nga mga areas nga nga kanang pwede na to ma, ma explore para naatay sustainable and clean energy renewable nga energy okay so it's all about the understanding kaning mga major breakthroughs okay kanang daghang kayong mga major breakthroughs ato ang society karon nga mabalik yun nato sa cell especially kung muhiskot na ta og uh, physiology and medicine okay so i hope nga na inyo hang i-check na kaning sa inyong learning checklist, please uh, check yourself if you can simply define what is a cell or simply identify the cell concept or describe the progress of cytology as a science. Identify and describe the different biomolecules that made up the cells and explain the significance of cytology to society. Okay? So, I think uh, that ends our discussions. Uh, topic number one. So, that is just the overview of cell and molecular biology okay so this is edward opena your course instructor course instructor for this subject okay so until next time see you again god bless us all